Here comes iPhone 11. iPhone 11 is launching on 10 September and Apple have officially announced it. So let's see how's iPhone 11. Hi guys, it's SBYT and with the launch of the iPhone 11 just around the corner coming next Monday on September the 10th, quite a lot of you have been asking me for information. So in today's video, we're gonna take a first look at what we're due to expect. We're talking specs, features, price, and of course, design. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Right, so in my hand here, I have three different colored clone models of the iPhone 11. It happens every year. They're usually pretty accurate in terms of design. Now we think there's gonna be the exact same range as there was last year. So you're gonna get the standard iPhone 11, the larger model and the iPhone 11 R as well. Now the naming is a tough one to pin down because of course we saw for the first time the Max model being unveiled, but then usually Apple uses the term Pro for a lot of their sort of superior models with the likes of the iPad Pro and the MacBook Pro of course. And there's also talk that the three names could be the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Too many words in a name, really, for me. The 11R, which is Apple's kind of budget option, will offer very similar features to their flagship premium two main models. There'll just be a couple of things it misses out on and the build quality generally is a little bit less. There's question marks about whether we're going to see this specific color of the camera arrangement on the back, but there's no denying we are going to see the square look to the top left hand side. Presumably the primary main camera sensor, an ultra wide angle and a telephoto lens as well. So three sensors on the 11 and 11 Pro slash Max and two camera sensors on the iPhone 11R. Now one big feature that's apparently been leaked is the fact that the new iPhone camera will allow you to alter the image after the photo is taken in terms of if a shot is slightly blurred or there's certain things that are out of frame, you'll be able to select different sort of frames, if you will, so that you get the kind of perfect shot. Very similar to what we saw on the Pixel 3 with Top Shot. So of course this is a great feature, but it's not necessarily something we haven't seen before, unless they do it in a slightly different way that improves on what we've seen before. Outside of the camera arrangement on the back, the logo is actually, we believe, going to be dropped down towards the middle and the iPhone text is going to disappear as well. Outside of that, it's gonna look pretty much identical to last year's model. On the front, we have the exact same design as what we saw on last year's models. If some of you guys were hoping that they might get rid of the notch this year, unfortunately, it doesn't look like they will. It's not something that Apple generally do. You've only got to look at other iPhones in the past, Apple products in general in the past, and they usually have certainly a few years cycle on designs and just tweaking specs, features, etc. There was talk about them being a slightly smaller notch on the front, but again, a lot of people don't think this is gonna be true. The 11R will have a 6.1 inch display, the standard iPhone 11 will have a 5.8 inch display, and the Pro or Max version will have a 6.5 inch display. So the iPhone 11R should have an LCD display, whereas the iPhone 11 11 and 11 Pro should have an OLED display. Now we're also led to believe that the display panel will be the pretty much the same one that's used by the Samsung S10 and the Note 10 range as well. You will therefore get a better display on those two models, but again, for the average consumer, most people, unless they're side by side, probably won't be able to tell whether they've got an LCD screen or an OLED screen. Now the iPhone 11 range will almost certainly come with the A13 Bionic chip. Now the A12 Bionic chip, seven nanometer, was absolutely incredible and blew pretty much everything out of the water last year. Of course, this year they're gonna be competing with the likes of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 Plus, which is of course used by many of the top Android flagships and the Kirin 985 or the Kirin 990, which Huawei will probably pack into the Mate 30 Pro. It'll be interesting to put these sorts of phones side by side and see exactly what results we get. And of course, if you wanna see that, let me know in the comments. Now in terms of RAM, and this is a figure that often gets banded about, especially by a lot of Android devices, we've seen the emergence of eight, 10, 12 gigabytes, a little bit overkill for smartphones in my opinion, but equally hearing that we're gonna see four gigabytes on the iPhone 11 range might leave a little bit to be desired by some people. But of course, iOS is different to Android. There will be certain optimization around the new hardware 
hardware, and I personally didn't necessarily feel the four gigabytes of RAM being a problem when using the iPhone XS Max. And of course, in terms of software, we are led to believe we're gonna see iOS 13 being launched alongside the brand new iPhone range. And of course, if you wanna see videos on that, tips, tricks, best settings, etc., on iOS 13, then let me know in the comments. It's apparent that the face unlock will be up to 30% faster and features like dark mode will finally come to the iPhone. Now, one great new feature apparently with the new range of iPhones is that they will now be compatible with both PlayStation DualShock 4 controllers and Bluetooth enabled Xbox controllers. So the new iPhone could be a great gaming device with that A13 Bionic chip, of course, as well. Now, in terms of specs, of course, the iPhone has generally never been massive for battery, but there's been a lot of leaks that the new range are going to have some hefty cells. Quite what those specific specs are, are unclear right now and will probably be unclear at launch because usually knowing Apple, they will say it's the biggest battery ever on an iPhone, but don't worry, we'll break it down when that launch comes and I'll tell you exactly what those specs are. They will have wireless charging and they will also have reverse wireless charging as well, something we've seen with Huawei and Samsung devices in the past. A bit of a gimmick for me in terms of sort of charging another phone, but if you've got accessories like Bluetooth wireless earphones, for example, then that is when it probably comes in quite handy. Now, while we're on battery, Let's talk about charging and the latest rooms are, of course, that we are still going to see a lightning port on the bottom and not type C, which still it baffles me considering Apple pride themselves on being this huge, great ecosystem and pretty much every device now, the MacBooks, the iPads, everything pretty much has type C ports other than the iPhone, the main biggest seller it's just a bit bizarre for me. There's obviously a reason behind it. It's probably due to profit or cost efficiency or something, but I may be wrong. There may be a great reason for it. But yeah, Apple, come on, 2019, what? There's also a strong rumor that the iPhone 11 range will not be 5G compatible. And while that's a little bit disappointing, I don't think it's a massive, massive downside because I don't really feel 5G is 100% firmly, fully ready anyway. I think it's gonna be 2020 before we seeing some of those benefits. And there's also strong rumors that it is going to have Apple Pencil support, something that for years, Apple have been firmly against having a stylus or a pencil or anything with their iPhone. It looks like things might be about to change. In terms of pricing, we know that Apple are gonna set this bar pretty high as they do most years. And there has been a leak that there's a 128 gigabytes of storage option that's gonna be available for the $999 mark, 1,099 for 256 gigabytes and $1,200 for the 512 gigabytes model. And the pricing for the Pro or Max models will start with the 128 gigabytes of storage option, 1199 and 1299 for the 256 and the 512 options. Pre-orders on the 13th of September and the release date will be the 20th of September. I will have unboxing and review videos as well as sort of camera comparisons, etc., with some of the top flagships around right now. If you want to see those, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you've turned on the notification bell so that when they are posted, you are notified. If you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, then drop a like down below and share it with your friends and family if they're interested too. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.